morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Master Data Governance, Best Practices and Lessons Learned. I'm Terry Slather. I'm the Field Support Marketing Manager for Utopia Global, and I will be your moderator for today's session. Questions may be asked throughout the webinar via the question pane on your GoToWebinar toolbar, and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation, time permitting, of course. In addition, we are recording today's webinar, and I'll make sure that that link is sent out shortly after the webinar's conclusion. In addition, you can participate in the social media discussion about today's topic by using and following the hashtag UtopiaWeb. Today's speakers are Siva Ramadas. Siva is the head of database and technology for Southeast Asia, SAP. And in addition, we have Danny Thien. Danny is the Director of Sales and Solutions for Utopia for APJ. With that, Siva, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Gary. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone on the call. Uh, I'm from SAP. Uh, what I'd like to share with you today in my slide uh, is trying to how our principles and technology strategy that would be the design for a better, uh, better world. Now, the, the SAP company, as you would know it, is, is not just an ERP vendor. We are a business innovation company that can help you run your business better. And large enterprises today rely on us to run their mission critical processes, functions, and SAP today is focused on five market categories. We are investing simultaneously in five categories, applications, analytics, mobile, database, technology, and cloud. And all these is being powered by SAP. Let me touch on the innovation that taking place in SAP. In the application business aid area that we are known for, mission critical processes, resource planning, systems of better thought, is where we are focused on, that's what we are known for. That's the leading vendor, your group. We focus on analytics, which empowers people in your company. We refer to this as the system for engagement for making informed decisions. In the mobile area, you're increasing your reach inside and outside your business. And this is the next frontier for employee and customer engagement. In cloud, SAP today delivers economies of scale and efficiencies cloud across all the categories that we mentioned, application, analytics, and mobile. The other big play for SAP is in the database and technology area. And we are involved in driving the transformation of the way organizations store, manage, and access data. And all these categories are powered by SAP on which is our real-time business plan. The combination of our investments in the five market categories combined with SAP delivers a robust open platform for real-time business. And it's through this combination of these investments that you, our customer, will be able to achieve one plus one, which will be greater than In the next slide, I, I will touch on the middleware platforms specifically, and, uh, and we will go into greater detail on information management and government. So as a global leader in delivering business applications that enable you, our customer, to incorporate business process. It enables you to run better, be competitive, 
We also offer a suite of middleware solutions. SAP offers tools and products that help you develop applications and manage your application lifecycle to design, build, test, and deploy. With SAP NetWeaver process orchestration, we offer business process and rules automation integration to third-party applications, SOA governance, and other functionalities to enable you to run your application seamlessly. We also, with the acquisition of Sybase, now allow you and enable you to mobilize your enterprise information to make timely decisions anywhere, anytime, And also, importantly, data management solutions that offer a business process to ensure that the core of whatever information that you are talking about utilize today to transact, analyze, and make decisions is based on a single view of truth that adheres that adheres to data integrity, data management rules, processes. So with that, I would now like to hand you over to Derry, who will take you through data management that you are involved in your business model. Over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Siva. Um, my name is Danny. Uh, and I would like to speak to you a little bit more about uh, data governance today, what it is, how we can go about realizing it, what are some of the lessons learned based on my past experiences as a data specialist. So before I begin, let me first clarify that uh, this uh, webinar is not uh, focused on MDG, uh, Master Data Governance, the application. Uh, for that, we actually have another webinar, MDM versus MDG, where we uh, go into more details about the uh, functionalities of uh, NetWeaver MDM versus uh, Master Data Governance, uh, and to give a uh, compare and contrast uh, between the two different applications. If you're interested to find out more about that, uh, do highlight it in your uh, feedback. Uh, so that we may arrange for that uh, webinar to be uh, broadcasted uh, to the APJ region as well. So um, what is data gov master data governance? Master data governance is a set of disciplines, technologies, applications, policies, and procedures to administer, orchestrate, and most importantly, ensure data is optimized for consumption. There is a lot of confusion in the marketplace about uh, what is IT governance versus data governance. In fact, uh, these two concepts are distinct and, and uh, discrete. For IT governance, it is analogous to the pipe that moves the information. IT governance is the decisions about these pipes. But on the other hand, data governance is analogous to the liquid flowing through these pipes. Governance affects the decisions, which is then directing the business. IT governance is important to ensure data governance is effective. And uh, data governance doesn't necessarily uh, enforce IT governance. So you can see that IT governance is actually a subset of of data governance that drives the effectiveness of data governance. The goals of data governance are fivefold. Accuracy, consistency, completeness, availability, and security. And in short, uh, we call it ACAS. There are other categories as well that uh, might apply to specific organizations. For example, like uniqueness, timeliness, currency, referential integrity. It really depends on the nature of the business 
and the nature of the data. So imp most importantly for data governance, it is looking at how to make how, how do you ensure the liquid going through the IT systems in, in these pipes is clean and is if, and is optimized. Right? As you see in this uh, little glasses over here, how do you make sure that the water flowing through these pipes are not murky and when it reaches the audience for consumption, it is fit for consumption. So to accomplish data governance, let's look at some of the uh, building blocks um, that goes into um, the discipline of data governance. On the left side here, we have the data governance organization. So one of the key uh, objectives would be to formalize the data governance organizations, the roles and responsibilities, and the empowerment of these roles and, re roles and responsibilities and opportunistically address key strategic data processes. For example, data standards. In, in this case, we, we try to advise our customers to adopt industry standards where applicable and address the individual data processes for the different data objects with a focus on data quality, compliance, and security. And lastly, commission the master data management tools for enterprise data objects, including data integration to data consumers. So this is a quote that I, I really like myself. Management is the decisions you make. Governance is the structure for making them. Right? So governance, governance in effect, is a framework whereby you can make more effective decisions around your mass data. So we have all these building blocks uh, uh, in, in play. Uh, how do we go about orchestrating it? How, how do we go about building up a game plan for your data? At Utopia, we look into three aspects um, of data governance, people, process, and technology. In terms of people, we look at who will create, manage, and use the data. In terms of process, which is the how, we look at the company maturity of the data governance framework that you employ. And in terms of the what, we look at uh, technologically with what, what kind of architecture and applications and technology that are available out there in order to carry out your, your plan. So in this, in this example, um, we have engaged with a Singapore-based shipping company to put together a robust data governance program so that we can provide consistent and meaningful information um, to the, the business and the system landscape. So this is a comparison of um, the as-is um, situation without data governance on the left and what they're trying to accomplish to, um, in their landscape with data governance on the right side. So in the example on the left, um, you can see that the chaos is, is uh, reigning supreme, right? Systems are complex, and often we find redundancies, um, redundant groups or constellations of, of uh, applications where data is siloed. And this siloed nature of the various applications and line of businesses tend to create introverted data without a consideration of, of uh, the different business lines. In these cases, one end up with definitions that are inconsistent and, a, and as a consequence, data that is inaccurate. And to compound the situation, we typically see multiple line of businesses resolving the same problems over and over again. In the example on the right, um, this is what we're trying to get to. This is an environment where data governance has been implemented. 
I can see the chaos has dissipated, and the environment is consider considerably simplified. So not only does it encourage more collaboration and communication between the different lines of businesses, it also cuts down on cost associated with bad data management. So how do we bring about this radical transformation? So as we see in the middle here, it is having a game plan, which is based on people, process, and technology. So let's look into a little bit more of the three aspects of master data governance, uh, especially in the context of this uh, case study. So one of the first things that we did for them was to look at the governance organization. Successful data governance will require the involvement of the entire organization. When and data is viewed as an enterprise asset, everyone from the top to the bottom, from the CEO level to the lowest level employee, will share the responsibility of managing it as such. So in general, uh, it, it takes on a form of a pyramid structure as shown here on the right side. And for this uh, client, we, we can segregate them into three levels in this pyramid. The strategic level, the tactical level, and the operational level. For the strategic level, the enterprise sponsors are the, are the uh, champions of the program. This level is global in scope and typically comprises of the C-level and senior execs uh, on the uh, line of businesses. This level is required to remove roadblocks that, and act, act as uh, arbitrators of any exception requests that are unable to resolve at the lower levels. The strategic level also define and set visions, provide direction, and represent all of the organization's interests and functional areas. Next, we move down to the technical level, which typically comprises of business owners, domain uh, data domain leaders, and data stewards. And this body can be either local or regional in scope, depending on the company structure. And this group is typically responsible for resolving um, escalated problems, and they also set the prioritization and approving data remediation actions for data quality issues. On the operational level, this level comprises what we call data custodians, and they are typically business and operational and even technical staff that is not strictly inside the data governance program, but they work with the data on a day-to-day -day basis. And generally, they would have a dotted line to each of the data governance organization to the data stewards. This group is typically local in scope. So with these three levels, we also define the specific business roles um, for each of the roles within the data, data, data Governance Council. So here we have uh, seven, but more roles can be defined depending on, again, the needs of the organization. In terms of the application data architect, um, this person is generally responsible for the design of data within the application, but also bearing in mind how data is uh, used across the landscape. For application owner, he or she ensures the task associated with the ownership of the deployed application are carried out and it complies with all the data standards that has been defined by the Data Governance Council. The business data steward are the representatives for the integrity and quality of the data within each of her responsibility uh, of the data domains put under their charge. For data custodians, these are the people that ensure data that are defined by the application meets the goals and objectives of the business process within those applications. 
data governance administrators are key positions that engages with all levels of the organization. That person is charged with maintaining awareness with all the data issues to be addressed uh, by the appropriate data governance uh, level and escalate these issues as needed. Data governance analyst uh, manages the compliance to the data standards and reports back up to the data steward. And last but not least, we have the data quality analyst who analyzes and reports on the data quality findings against the metrics, puts together scorecards and reports and status reports, and feedback this to the beta business data steward, custodians, and data governance committee. So these are quick descriptions of the business roles. Of course, uh, um, these profiles have uh, specific skills associated with them, which we define together with uh, our client. Um, and uh, especially with uh, regards to the needs. So for each organization, this could differ slightly, uh, depending on the nature of the business and the nature of the data. Next, we go on to the how, which is the process part cycle side of things. So in terms of the how, we look at three areas, which is the um, data standards, business controls, and uh, processes, and quality metrics. So in terms of data standards, the focus here should be enterprise-wide or global in nature. In some cases, it might be beneficial to start out with uh, one of the objects in a given area, a functional area, and expand from there. Uh, this is the land expand uh, strategy that we have also employed in this, this uh, uh, customer. Um, it is also important not just to define the attributes and the data standards across these objects. It is also important to look at how we can measure um, the compliance to these standards. And with that, we develop heat maps that can identify the hot areas or hot zones um, to measure the compliance level so that we can analyze how complex this uh, task and um, standards according to the um, needs of the data object. Last but not least, we also do a maturity assessments which will tell us which areas of the business uh, are standardized and which areas could do well to be more standardized. When we look at business process and control, we typically look at what has been established by the data governance organization um, by its members. In cases where there's validation for a piece of data, the entry process would need to enforce the rules so that these um, validations can be enforced so that invalid values cannot enter the application. Corresponding controls would be, for example, a review process for the information by another party to verify the standards and conventions have been followed. As a result, the information provided is as accurate as possible and as completed as possible. The important thing is to make sure that the compliance rules and regulations are met, especially with uh, these days SOX compliance and um, the uh, financial compliance measures. In terms of quality metrics, we want to establish the ability to provide an organization to increase the overall quality of the data. And to do that, a means of measuring progress is needed. As the other disciplines of data governance, we institute metrics and KPIs to give us an idea whether the situation has improved over time or actually deteriorated over time. From a data governance process perspective, indicators of interest would be, for example, a number of uh, requests of operations, of data uh, management operations, number of uh, data correction errors per area, and number of issues resolved within a certain time period. And the possibilities are endless here, and we have uh, tools 
uh, that we can use to monitor beta quality metrics. The objective here is not to make sure that um, data is, you know, 100% accurate or, or, or uh, compliant, but more importantly, to ensure that data is fit for use. And by fit for use, um, what I mean is we have to look at the actual process consuming the data and make sure that the data can can actually support the process. So uh, that is that, that there's tangible returns from uh, compliant with this quality metrics. Last but not least, uh, we, we come to the architecture and technology, which is the what. For architecture, we have uh, three main divisions. Um, centralized, um, which is the simple single control at the enterprise level. In this case, regional groups would not have uh, much impact. And for example, generally, uh, employee master data is maintained within a centralized type of model. For decentralized model, which is opposite of centralized, um, this is uh, an attempt to control the data regionally. Um, and in some cases, they have total autonomy. The third is a federated model, which is the middle ground between the two extremes. In this model, data is input via a single point, but regional groups do provide input in decisions, for example, in approval processes. Another version of this actually provisions for the data to be entered in various different systems. Um, so the point of entry de differs upon how um, the, the data domain is split up, and each area is responsible for different attributes. When we look at the technology aspects, there are three basic styles of architecture using MDG deployments. The repository model, of which all of the master data is stored in a single database, and the, the repository bus must include all of the attributes required in all of the systems that consume master data. So it is literally the single point of truth. The registry model, which contains a list of keys that can be used to find all related mass data records in the application. So the actual master data still resides on the application databases, but uh, you have a single place where you can find a list of keys. And last but not least, a hybrid approach, which is, again, a middle ground between the repository and registry models. It includes features from both, which um, leaves the master data record in the application databases, but it maintains keys, as, like, as in the registry model, but also replicates the most important attributes in the hybrid uh, master, data, uh, master data governance databases. The hybrid approach is uh, prefer pre pre preferable when it uh, has a, a strong reporting requirement um, with regards to the master data domain. So in this diagram on the right side here is the uh, architecture that we've proposed for this uh, particular client, uh, which you can see is um, actually a centralized repository model. And within this uh, enterprise MDM ecosystem, we have the data quality component, which uh, does the profiling, cleansing, um, augmentation, enrichment, and, and monitoring. And this we have accomplished by SAP Data Services. The workflow, which was accomplished by um, process orchestration, business process management, BPM. And also the metadata repository was accomplished by information Last but not least, we also have the persistent master data repository, which contains all, all of their key master data objects as well as the reference data, which can be managed by either the NetWeaver MDM uh, product or MDG, master data governance. 
So in our findings, um, the SAP EIM suite of products is able to help our customer to keep to get the data clean and to also keep it clean. So what are some of the lessons learned from this uh, project, which was a, a strategy consulting project uh, leading up to an MDM implementation? So we started off with a simple object and uh, not boiling the ocean. Um, from, pre from there, land and expand. Get to know your data set early. So we did profiling of the data as part of the strategy exercise to make sure that uh, we identify all the key areas of discrepancies and address them early. Identify and flag dormant data, right? So you don't need to um, manage all your data, but keep the data set clean by identifying um, uh, opportunities for archive. So get a growth statistics, include them in your metrics. Um, make sure that you have measurable uh, goals to, me to meet as well as to monitor um, the data quality going forward. Analyze data for multiple approaches. So engage uh, the different LOBs to, to look at the data. So for example, customer data might belong to sales, but we also have to make sure that we have the finance view so that we can get the, the credit established. We also have to have the marketing view so that uh, the marketing uh, components can be uh, marketing objectives can be accomplished. Consider interaction with other objects. Look at dependencies between enterprise, uh, enterprise data objects and make sure that uh, these uh, uh, referential integrity is maintained. And look at the tools that can help you accelerate the program. Like, right? for example, in this case, uh, we, we looked at the SAP, SAP EIM suite of products. Last but not least, the business owns the data, engage them, right? So nobody knows more about the data than the business, and they have to take an active state, stake in the data. And finally, the takeaway uh, that I would like to have you um, from today's webinar is look at data from the aspect of people, process, and technology, and have a game plan before any um, implementations take place. And with that, um, thank you very much. Terry, please open the floor uh, for questions. Okay, thanks Danny. The floor is now open for any questions you may have. Please enter them into the question pane located on the right hand side of your window and we'll answer as many as possible. Um, Danny, we did have a couple come in during the presentation, so we'll start with those while people are entering additional ones. Uh, the first of which is, which data objects are classified as master data as opposed to reference data or transactional data? Right, so um, typically data defined as master data um, will vary depending on the industry and the fundamental, fundamental business processes that, that uh, uses the data. Um, but typically when we talk about master data, we refer to data that's relatively static in nature, so it doesn't change much over time. And uh, as opposed to uh, our transactional data, which is, uh, you know, as its name implies, transactional in nature, uh, or reference data, which is uh, completely static, right? Uh, for example, lookup tables and, and whatnot. Um, so, Again, it, it, it will depend on the industry and the way that uh, the business uses data. So, for example, a pharmaceutical company uh, will define, you know, uh, healthcare providers, hospitals, uh, state licenses, and whatnot as master data. While a financial firm, uh, for example, would define uh, master data as counterparts, security, geography, currency, so and so forth. Okay, our next question, and I guess you could kind of consider this a bit of a follow-up. Um, what types of data should be governed centrally, and what types of data should be governed in a decentralized way? Um, so data that, that uh, needs to be governed centrally uh, typically are what we call enterprise master data. 
So data that is shared across the different lines of businesses where um, you know, issues around the data that will require collaboration uh, across, across the line of businesses. Um, in, so so in, in general, this uh, depends on the structure of the business. So let's say if the business is, is very siloed, uh, then, um, for example, customers in Africa and customers in, in Europe, um, you don't necessarily need to centralize them if, if, uh, the, line, if, if the geographic uh, setup of the company is as such uh, that the, bus the business doesn't um, do transactions with each other and across um, the geographies. Um, but in a, typically in a multinational company where uh, trade is, is conducted uh, globally, then you would like to centralize those data. Okay, and Danny, it looks like this is going to be our last question. What types of controls need to be put in place for master data specifically? So, uh, control is an uh, is, uh, interesting question um, and a very good question. So, in fact, in, in Asia PAC, this is, uh, this is a big problem uh, that if there's no solid control over the data and as a result, uh, a lot of companies spend a lot of money on cleansing the data, cleaning up its data sets, but uh, then leave it to rot uh, and deteriorate over time. As a result, after you know, just a few years, you will have to do the, redo the cleanup exercise again. So by establishing the solid control at the onset, uh, what these controls will do is to monitor and audit the usage of the data in these systems, and hopefully in real time, so that we can alert our data stewards or data custodians of any potential issues and they can address them um, very, very quickly. Um, so, for example, you will need to you know, set up this uh, tracking and audit trail uh, to document the lineage of, of, of changes of the data so that uh, you can also report on these changes. Um, so, we have helped uh, some customers in, in doing this by Im implementing Information Steward, which provides uh, the necessary, necessary functionalities for, for such alerts and monitoring. Um, 